Now this video is for the creator who's most likely just getting started and has their bedroom to start shooting their YouTube videos, whether you're using your smartphone or a camera. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my best tips so you can get the best video possible out of your small space or a bedroom just like this one so you can crush your YouTube videos with no excuses. Whether you're using your camera or your smartphone, it doesn't matter to apply tip number one and that is to just clean the clutter and clean out your room before you actually start filming. Now this might be a little bit of an obvious tip, but oftentimes if you're shooting videos and you got a freaking dungeon and dinginess behind you, kind of like Sean's first video that you can see right here and you can just see the mess and the clutter way behind him. All right, so uh, this is, I guess, the first Sean Thinks vlog. It kind of takes away from whatever he's trying to deliver, minus his energy in the video. Uh, all that to say that you want to have a clean room to get started. Oftentimes it is just easier to create when there is less clutter. So make sure you clean your room before you even get started to set up your audio, video, and your lighting. You gotta just press record. This video is sponsored by StreamYard. This is our go-to platform for live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, especially when we have multiple people joining us on a stream. With an incredibly easy to use interface for doing cool transitions bringing in text on the screen, and seamlessly bringing on guests. This is the perfect platform for the new and experienced creators alike. You can use the link that we have in the description below to get $10 off. Now most people who are using their bedroom have a square room to use as a film space and you know maybe you have a window, maybe you don't, but for the most part you have a square or a rectangle to work with. This room right here is about a 10 by 11 square foot space and uh, it works. This is totally fine to get started. And as you can see, some of the gear I have right here, I got a ring light and I got the camera. But before I even get started, I wanna dial in my shot. Now, there are so many ways that you can use a Squarespace Squarespace, this video is not brought to you by Squarespace. There's so many ways that you can use a Squarespace to film videos. The first way is to use a corner. What's smart about using a corner to film your videos is that it provides you the furthest distance from your backdrop, i.e. your room, right? So the further you are away from your room, the more chance of background blur you can introduce into your shot, which is just a smart tactic to be able to create some depth in your shot. If you're shooting in the middle of the room, you're obviously gonna bring the background closer to you, therefore making it less dynamic in the sense of having background blur, which is totally fine and that's okay. Another smart way to shoot your video is if you do have a window in your bedroom is to use your window as your main key light. As you can see, the lighting on my face looks pretty good, but that's just a window putting light on my face. Another power tip when it comes to using a window light is to don't use it as backlight. You don't want the window to be behind you uh, and it's gonna be a lot more overexposed if you have light coming from behind you. Even if you have a light on you, it's just not the best look. But if you have to cover the window using blackout curtains or what have you, Go ahead and do so and that's totally fine, but just best rule of thumb is to put the lighting in your face or have it light your background as much as possible rather than it backlighting your shot. Now before I talk about gear, the last shot you can actually set up is just a straight on shot with the wall directly behind you. Doing it this way would look best if you actually don't have too much going on. And as you can see, my wife has put some, I guess you can call it tchotchkes on the wall, but it's not much, it's very simple. And like if I, if I had a YouTube channel and I shot like this, that wouldn't be a terrible shot and I can just deliver content like this. The bed is over here, which is gonna take away some of that echo. It's kind of echoing here, but that's okay. But nonetheless, if you keep it nice, clean, simple, and minimal, you can get away with just shooting a flat shot like this. Now, let's talk about the gear. So I kind of touched on lighting already uh, with using a window light, but a lot of people have a ring light, which is a fairly good light, unless you're like me who has glasses and then you can get caught up with like rings in your eyes and stuff. But you can use a ring light uh, to light your face. The thing is with a small bedroom, you might not be able to just shine the light right on your face. If you have a soft box or a soft light, that'll work. But if you're in a tight space and you have a white walls, you can actually blast the light toward the wall and let that light that bounces off show on your face. And that'll look very flattering on your face. And you won't have such a harsh light on your face, which will be a lot pleasing to people watching your videos. Now, if you do have a light, whether it's a soft light or you wanna use the ring light to shine right on your face, uh, the best rule of thumb, in my opinion, is to let the light come down at your face from a 40 degree angle or so. So like, here's the light right here, right? As you can notice, if I put the camera right here with the light up here, it looks, I think, a lot better than if I had the light just directly on my face, obviously too with glasses, doesn't work that much. 
but if I come right here, it looks really good. So if you have the ability to offset your light a little bit, do so and it'll look a lot flattering when you do that as well. And then once you have your camera set up all ready to go, you wanna put it on a tripod and I would say a fairly smaller tripod. Uh, we'll post down the links down in the description below for the best tripods we recommend. But we also made a video on a all-in-one stand that Nolan did uh, when it comes to shooting YouTube videos, which could be super convenient when shooting YouTube videos in your bedroom. Now, when it comes to audio, you kind of can't have the conversation without bringing up lenses. And so I would suggest number one is if you're using a mic like this, a shotgun mic that's on top of the camera, I would encourage you to go pretty wide with your lens. I know a lot of cameras come with a 16 millimeter kit lens that you can zoom all the way out on and be at 16 millimeters. I would encourage you to do that if you have a shotgun mic. And then the reason you wanna do this is so you can get closer to the mic. I'm actually holding this camera just about arm's length distance from my face and there's a shotgun mic and it sounds pretty good. And so uh, you don't wanna put a shotgun mic on a camera and go super far away, it's gonna be very echoey. Welcome to my YouTube channel and a very distracting audio experience for the viewer. That's why if you wanna keep it simple and minimal, go with a wider lens. I would say 16 millimeters is like the max width, but you can go even more wide with like a 10 to 18 or this M50 has an 11 to 22. All are great focal lengths when it comes to shooting super wide and these kind of setups could be used for vlogging as well. I'm actually shooting in the middle of my room and it just looks a little bit far away because I'm using a wide lens. Now I'm going to zoom into 18 millimeters on this lens and uh, it makes it look a little bit more tight uh, even though I didn't move, right? But if I zoom it out, I did not move and I didn't realize there was more to zoom out and I haven't been using it that way, but it's all good. Anyway, so like definitely look into getting a super wide lens and we'll post our best recommended gear down in the description below. If anything, just shoot on the widest lens possible to make your room look as big as possible. And if you're shooting with a point and shoot camera that can't zoom out as much as you can, then do the best you can. Like I said, go to the corner and film from there and you can get the most distance behind you by doing it that way. All right, so if you're getting value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button for me. And also I would love to check out what you're shooting in your bed bedrooms, which could sound really sketch if you don't have any context, but put it down below in the comments and would love to see. But the next tip is kind of just more of like a concept and that is to just maybe prioritize shooting videos than it is the aesthetic of your room. If this thing is really supposed to take off and you want, you really want to try to build some part-time or full-time income using YouTube, then I would sacrifice potentially the aesthetic of your room to maximize for the use of it. All that to say, if you're getting serious about YouTube, then I would consider reorganizing your furniture just to get the most out of it. And if you are serious about growing your YouTube channel and making some money, I wanna encourage you to take our free one hour YouTube class. That could be found at thinkmasterclass.com and you'll learn about the latest strategies on how to grow and scale on YouTube with a small audience, creating a part-time or even full-time income. We have a ton of students who have went through this class and now have considered themselves full-time creators. But if you're looking to take YouTube serious, go to thinkmasterclass.com and take that free one hour class. I promise you'll get something from it and it's gonna be awesome to see you crush it on YouTube this year. And then the next tip is because you are using a space that you use for multiple reasons, I would encourage you to batch record your videos. Plan in advance uh, multiple videos every time you shoot a sit down talking head. Maybe change out your shirt from time to time, but take a day or maybe even a week to dial in multiple videos so that when you sit down and shoot videos in your bedroom, that you're doing it once for at least a couple weeks. And so we have found here at Think Media that batch recording is one of the best strategies to get ahead and also stay consistent posting videos on YouTube. But if you wanna check out other YouTube studio setups from this channel, you can click or tap the screen or to check out another video from Think Media, click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future one. Peace.